Hi everyone! My name is Anton Pelcher. I'm an engineer and I've been building fish farms for over 10 years. In the last videos, we discussed how to choose the right type of fish for farming in rice. We sorted out quite a lot of information in issues related to the fish species choice, but still I didn't manage to cover all major types of fish that could be farmed in rice. Watch this video to the end as we continue. I hope you will find it as useful and informative as the previous ones. And the next hydrobion species, I wouldn't say that it's exactly fish, as it's Australian crayfish. We have received quite a lot of requests for these hydrobiont, and we're accomplishing projects on the Australian crayfish. So let's talk about it in more detail. The main milestones. Its optimum growing temperature is 26-28 degrees Celsius. One water exchange per hour is enough for its farming. Stocking density is up to 2 kg per square meter. As far as the depth of water in the trays is concerned, it's not grown in standard fish holding tanks, but in special trays, and shelters in the trays are provided for. In general, the depth of these trays is 20 cm. Usually the trays are put in four floors levels, and we get them up to 8 kg per square meter of area. Its grow-out weight is 80 to 150 grams. Growth rate is about 7 months from fry to 80 grams, and 10 months from fry to 150 grams. These are its average growth parameters. It's recommended to farm your own fry, as purchasing it's quite expensive. Farming prime cost is approximately 6.5-9.5 US dollars per kilogram. Wholesale price is from 10.5 to 16 US dollars per kilogram. Retail price from 20 to 27 US dollars per kilogram. This is the average price specifically for Australian crayfish. What are the advantages of growing Australian crayfish? Well, first of all, it's great to farm it if there is some sort of sales to beer shops, as where there is beer, there is a demand for crayfish. And this is a significant advantage. And the second one is its meat. The Australian crayfish has better meat quality than that of standard European crayfish, as well as its Russian counterpart. What are its disadvantages? Very low stocking densities. In order to grow the same amount of crayfish as, for example, sturgeon, you need 3-5 times more area, and these are additional costs, very significant construction expenses, and therefore the investment into growing one ton of crayfish is much higher than that for sturgeon, trout, and even African catfish. As for African catfish, the difference in the amount of investment can be up to 10 times or even more. This is the first point. The second point is that farming crayfish requires a a lot of manual labor. I have not yet even heard that the process of crayfish farming has been so automated that manual labor was not required. So you need to be prepared to lots of manual labor, as crayfish constantly hides into the shelter. There they fall into malt. There's waste. Also there are killed specimens. There are losses. And this is constantly needs to be cleaned. And the dirt from the trees doesn't wash off by itself either. It also needs to be removed manually. So, these are the disadvantages of Australian crayfish, which are quite objective. Here we go, next. When would I recommend to start farming Australian crayfish? Probably if you have a chain of beer shops, or breweries, or restaurants where you sell beer, then it makes sense for you to grow crayfish. It would probably be interesting and economically viable. In other cases, I would refrain from commenting too much, because the question of economics is very important. So, unless there is a ready sales market with clear prices, I would recommend that you reconsider the issue of Australian crayfish farming. Well, a minimum capacity of 3-5 tons in the self-employment format and 10-20 tons in the large-scale or business format. This is the minimum capacity I would recommend, and the maximum it's up to you to decide, because it will depend on your sales. Shrimp. It's very similar to the Australian crayfish in farming parameters. It's also very, very similar to and in terms of pros and cons. It also has low planting densities. It also has low growth rates. You need more significant investment to farm shrimp. It has a higher selling price than sturgeon or trout. Usually, the retail price reaches 35 US dollars, from 27 to 35 US dollars. The wholesale price is 13 to 20 US dollars. The most common shrimp species are Rosenberg Microbrachium and Vaname. As for the farm capacity, I would recommend exactly the same as for Australian crayfish. That is, 3 to 5 tons is for self-employment format and 20 tons and above is for the business format. So the recommendations for crayfish and shrimp are very similar.
Whitefish. The parameters of its farming are very similar to those of trout. That is to say, it's also a cold water fish. It belongs to the salmonids in general. When would I recommend to farm whitefish? If you have a clear understanding of where to sell them at a good price, that is, if the sales price is above 5.5 US dollars per kilogram, then it's already possible to think about farming whitefish. As I have already mentioned, the farming parameters are similar to those of trout. But this fish is more delicate. It's more difficult to farm, especially at the larval stage or the stage of fry. Well, and as for the maximum stock density, I would not recommend more than 70 kg per cubic meter. For trout, it's 100-120 kg per cubic meter. This is what concerns whitefish. Just to conclude, if you are sure of strong sales at a good price, it's a suitable type of fish to farm in rice. Lape is well-known Asian fish. It's perfectly grown in warm Asian countries without using rice technology. It's also been farmed all over the world. It's well known in Russia. It's sold in the form of frozen fillets that are imported from Asia. This fillet costs quite inexpensive. Fish grows up to 350 grams during about a half a year. And it's rather high stock in densities, up to 150, even up to 2 kilograms per cubic meter. It needs little oxygen and warm water, and this is a tropical fish. So it's a good fish to farm. But we have practically no market for chilled tilapia in Russia. But for example, in the United States, there is a huge market for chilled tilapia, and it's much more expensive than frozen tilapia. And in Russia, there is no point in competing with frozen fillets imported from Asia at the price of around 4 US dollars per kilogram. That is explained by the fact that you don't get such a prime cost to be able to compete and make frozen fillets and sell them to some retail chains at a price which will guarantee you good profit. Then you need to grow tilapia in open water reservoirs, feed it with something, but not with extruded feed used in rice. Then you have a chance to get low production cost and work that way. But in mainland Russia and the CIS countries, unfortunately, it doesn't work. So you should analyze the situation in your country first. Atlantic salmon is very similar in terms of farming parameters. There is a nuance. It's a saltwater fish. It can be farmed, and there are experiments in growing salmon in fresh water. But they are not very numerous yet. It's not a proven technology. Therefore, salmon is grown mainly in seawater, and it grows longer, and the grow-out weight is about 4-6 kilograms, which is even higher than that of trout. So you have to wait for two years, from the moment to obtain and fertilized eggs, to the moment it reaches final grow-out weight. Why is it not actively farmed in Russia? Just because it needs salt water. And where is the influent discharged? Firstly, you need to buy sea salt. Secondly, to have salt-resistant equipment. And thirdly, to discharge salt effluent somewhere. And this is a problem from the point of view of environmental impact. So generally speaking, salmon farms are currently being built in Russia, for example. But there are few, because there is a number of nuances related to salt water. Herbivorous fish species such as carp, European carp, white amu are all cheap fish species that are simply not cost effective to grow in rice to grow out weight because you need to use special extruded feeds and they're expensive. And we have calculated the economics of farming carp, European carp, white amu, silver carp 100 times and I can say that it's definitely not profitable. So keep in mind you should not even bother. The only option when it's profitable is to grow your own fry in rice all year round and then transplant it into open ponds. That is the option that you can consider. There is also pike perch. Pike perch is also an interesting type of fish. But first of all, now there is no good quality stocking material of pike perch in my country. It's available in Europe and rather expensive, because pike perch develops cannibalism at the larval stage, and it's rather problematic to form your own broodstock. And sure, you should take into account its sale price in your country and region, and analyze whether to engage in its farming in artificial conditions, or it's not worth that. The last species I would like to mention are sea bass and dorada. These are interesting species if you farm them in large quantities, and the farm is located somewhere on the seashore, because salty water is required. So again, the same problems as with Atlantic salmon. But sea bass and derada objectively cost cheaper than Atlantic salmon. So the economics has to be considered very seriously and in advance. And to summarize all the fish species I've talked about in this video, I've promised to say a couple of words about the tips and mistakes, and now we'll combine them. It won't be anything new and a kind of discovery for you. So I will summarize in general all the things I've already told you about. Firstly, don't farm cheap fish species in rice. It doesn't make any sense. If you want to grow cheap fish, grow it in ponds, but farm fry in rice. That's my first advice. 
Secondly, there is no point in going to exotics. If there is no market for this fish, as for example in Russia some farmers try to grow barramundi, unfortunately nothing came out of this experiment, because it's not clear how to bring this fish to the market and to sell it in large quantities. This requires very serious effort, so farming exotic fish species is also a dubious pleasure. I have not yet seen any successful projects in my country, but it depends on the region, of course. Next, there is no perfect fish for farming in Russ. Every fish has its pros and cons. I have just clearly shown you that every fish has its positive and negative aspects. And depending on what you expect from this business, you can choose one type of fish or another, and it will suit you more or less. Estimate a minimum profitable capacity. If for sturgeon it's 5 tons a year, for African catfish it's at least 30-40 tons a year, even in a self-employment format. And in the business format, it's 20 tons for sturgeon and 60-80 tons for African catfish. If you try less than the minimum profitable capacity, you need to have clear understanding of why you are doing that. If you just want to try and see how the fish eats, grows, that's okay, you can do that of course. But then, don't have inflated expectations of your business outcome. Choose the type of fish which stocking material is easy to find in your country. This is also a very important point. If you want to grow some fish, but there is practically no stocking material available in your country and region, then you have to figure out where to get this stocking material from. For example, if we take eel, everybody wants seal, everybody covets it, but there is simply no stocking material in some countries. Theoretically, it could be imported from Europe, but there is an embargo on the export of eel from Europe, so it makes no sense to deal with it. Evaluate the possibility of purchasing high-quality feed, that is, whether there are feeds available for this type of fish. If we consider the same example once again, you want to farm eel or some other exotic type of fish, you need to understand what kind of feed you will need. In Russ, only extruded feed can be used. If this fish is not widely farmed in your country, then most likely you won't be able to get even imported fits for this type of fish, so you will have to replace them with something alternative. Well, and lastly, if there is no developed sales market for this fish, it's likely to be difficult. I'm talking about African catfish now. If you understand, realize that you are bringing a new product to the market, you will need to think of deep processing, developing your own brand, yes, these efforts pay off, but you need to understand that you will be ready to go all the way, because if you just want to try farming African catfish and you have no idea where to sell it and you don't want to bother about processing, then it's not a good option, so keep these factors in mind. I hope I have given you comprehensive information, so that you make your own thoughtful decision on the choice of fish. If you liked it and it was useful, press the like button and subscribe to my channel. It was Anton Pelcher and my channel on how to grow fish and make good money from it. Bye!